The video you are about to watch has been made possible with support from our friends at iFixit. More on them later, but for right now, let's get into the video. Hey everybody, uh, I'm wearing a red shirt because it's a happy Sunday uh, and I wear other colors on my civilian time. Um, hey, so we have a wonderful flea market out here in San Francisco called the Alameda Flea Market. And if you are a Mythbusters fan, which if you're watching this, you probably are, uh, that is the same, self-same Alameda runway. We filmed countless episodes, I think over 40 episodes of Mythbusters out of 200, uh, involved some aspect of that runway. This is also the runway that where all the car chases from the Matrix sequels were filmed. It is a stunning location. San Francisco sits in the distance at the end of the runway like Oz. I have, I have spent so many countless days out there alone. Um, I actually had a real, so I was just going to talk about what I got at the flea market, but I had a real sort of uh, a nostalgic moment walking onto the runway. Now, the Alameda runway is absolutely gargantuan. You, We got there at nine in the morning and it still took like 15 minutes to walk th from where we parked the car to the entrance where we waited online for another 10 minutes to get in. Um, don't let that inhibit you from going. The people that run the flea market are really good. And from what I could see, they were awesome at moving that line. So uh, we were in uh, and I was just walking up the runway and thinking, oh, look at all these ten thousands, tens of thousands of people here right now. And I have been lucky enough to be alone with some of my favorite people in the world out there. It was just lovely. Um, but I go to flea markets for a reason. And uh, it's always to find some kind of experience with an object and then taking that object home. And often these objects are exactly the kind of nostalgia that, that flea markets traffic in, you know, old tins for medicine and beautiful boxes like this gorgeous fiber box uh, that I picked up with Bell Systems in it. Okay, so this was the find of the flea market. This was only 30 bucks. I mean, it's about what that's worth. You find these on eBay all the time, but this one's in particularly lovely shape. The enamel's still shiny around this, and it's a Bell Systems. This was like a telephone technician's toolbox, plausibly from, you know, the earlier half of the last century, let's say. Um, but what's in here is even cooler. Okay, so um, we have established over many episodes that I have done uh, episodes. We've established over many videos that I have done on this channel uh, that I use a lathe all the time. And when you use a lathe, you use drill chucks chucked into the tailstock. So here is a normal Jacobs, uh, I think, half inch, half inch, one sixteenth to half inch chuck. Uh, then we've got a, uh, then we've got a uh, zero to half inch chuck. So this will actually go very, very small, but it's good to have two different sizes. In fact, I have one that goes up to three quarters of an inch. So let's just, you know, uh, my porridge is a little warm. My porridge is warmer. We've got some Goldilocks going on here today at the flea market. I picked up, bum, bum, bum. I'd like to say one for the bride and groom right now. It's just, it's such a special night. Uh, you guys look so beautiful. I just, the evening is perfect. So I just love you. Uh, so this this is the biggest one I had. Bob. <laughs> it's, this makes me so happy. Uh, it is also a, well, this is a heart for, oh yeah, this is Jacob's Chuck. These are all Jacob's Chucks. Jacob's are a gold standard uh, of manual Chuck. Uh, they're beautiful. This one is feels in great shape, actually, to be totally fair. It felt in better shape than the other giant one. Uh, so the difference between this one and this one uh, and why it's useful to me is that it's got an MT4 taper like these, so it'll fit in my tailstock, but it opens up to a full inch. And I need that because I just got a thing that has a one-inch arbor on it. Oh, yeah, it's this guy. I've been talking about how much I love annular cutters. Well, I finally bought a uh, a three inch. Is this not even three inch? It's it's two seven five. Do they not even make a three inch? 
it's two and three quarters, but it's got a one inch arbor and, wait a minute. Does it have a one inch arbor? No, it's an inch and a quarter. <laughs> it's an inch and a quarter arbor. <laughs> I thought this would fit in here, but it, well, all right. Doesn't matter, still glad to add a one inch gigantic Jacobs Chuck to my collection. Before this goes into rotation, I wanna check it out. So I'm going to soak it overnight in some uh, rust remover. Uh, it has an MT, what looks like an MT3 to MT4 adapter here that has seen better days. I possess also an MT3 to MT4 adapter. Uh, I am not gonna try and yank this off right now. It's plausible that, you know, some of it's gotten rusted together. So if I am gonna remove it, the best bet is to actually soak it in rust remover overnight and then give it a shot. And that is exactly what I am going to do. Um, do I even, I'm not even sure I have a chuck key big enough for this, but that's for tomorrow. Uh, there is another object going into the rust remover tonight, and it is the third thing I bought at the flea market today. Uh, and though it was expensive, reader, it was cheap. Um, this is called, this is a leather strap cutter, but it's called a plow cutter because you clamp a handled blade and, oh my God, wait a minute, I have a blade like this. Uh, sorry, you clamp a handled blade into this and you push it through the leather and it is strap cutters. The strap cutters you can buy today are not amazing. There are plow cutters for leather that are pretty good. They're hundreds of dollars. And I paid 140 for this, which is a completely reasonable price for it. Um, it is a French Curtat and Gespin in Paris. Uh, it's construction feels like a 19th century, but just, but just. Uh, it's got some beautiful details like this little diagonal knurl on the, on the shoulder here. Uh, it's a gorgeous piece. I have been wanting to add one of these to my collection for leather work forever, forever. I think I have a blade. Right. So, um, a fan made this magnificent thing and sent it to me. A fan made this beautiful thing and sent it to me. It is a leather cutting blade. It is, sh yeah, God would be cut. This is sharp to a degree that is comical. And now I think that it might be possible. Yes, okay, so. It's interesting. I need a different kind of blade for this. So normally in one of these plow cutters, the blade sits like this and you grab the handle here and you push it into the work. And I have another blade. Uh, yeah, this one, this isn't really, that's not really useful to me. Um, I thought this was a different form factor. This is fantastic for trimming and doing stuff on leather. I thought it was the perfect form factor for this. I'm still gonna have to buy one of these. All right, but um, I am going to also take this whole thing apart and clean it up and make all of its parts run really smooth. Uh, these two tightening screws have lost uh, a little, you know, a little turning, turning crank. So I am going to make one for it. I'm gonna make a pair. I'm gonna, you know, revivify them. Uh, yeah, but before I do all that, I, this also goes in rust remover for the night. And then we've taken care. Uh, I came in today just to do this so that I didn't have to wait another day after I came in tomorrow because I'm so impatient. I am so happy about this case. What am I gonna keep in it? Well, that's my business, isn't it? Right. Sorry. Who starts a video and then leaves the room? Hi everybody, Adam Savage, back in my cave. Uh, the my, my stuff has been soaking for actually a couple days now, so I'm gonna get my stuff out of the soak. Yeah, it tends to get a little dark in the soak. Oh, 
All right. Oh, well, uh, we'll put this one over here for right now. And we will work on the chuck. Um, okay, so first thing I want to do is see if I can't swap out that business. Wow, that's really gross. All right. Yeah. This is really delightfully filthy. I mean, the practice of doing this. We're gonna hit this with a bunch of WD-40 to kind of let it water itself out. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Just gonna get all the liquid out of this and then I'm gonna hit it with some oil. All right, um, I'm really happy with how this is going. I gave this a two days soak in rust remover. Uh, my favorite rust remover will include the link in the description below. Um, two days in that, and then when I twisted it, it was a little grindy. But now, it's starting to, it's starting to move. It's spraying a little stuff on me, but so I'm gonna chuck it in here again, and I'm gonna hit it with some three-in-one now. Penetrating oil I got in it to get in all, to you know, hopefully get out all the dirt. Um, with all that. Let's see here. Do I get a little more? I do. Right. I'm just cleaning the grease and dirt out of the keyway. Very little is showing up here now. I think I got most of the dirt out of this thing. All right, I think that is serviced. Now it's time to pull this off. Now this is the, uh, this is an MT2 to MT4. MT3 to MT4 adapter. I have another one here. So I'm going to use a little wedge tool that's meant specifically for this, for knocking that out. Hopefully after soaking all night, any rust that was joining these two together is now rent asunder. 
Here we go. Let's, let's start with a gentle tap, shall we? Why not? Why not? Bingo. Now, the advantage of this is that it goes all the way to the back and will um, be kicked back out by my tail stuck when I use it. I'm gonna try stoning this first, um, just to see if I can't take them on the high spot. Try this thing, for instance. Mm -hmm. All right. I, ooh, no, that's an MT2 to MT4. Hold on. Well, I guess I'm committed to this one. So let's just see if I, I thought it, maybe I can start. Wow, this thing banged around in a toolbox for a long oh, time. That is for sure. I'm not even sure if I'm totally ruining this uh, MT3 to MT4. MT stands for Morse taper. Morse, M-O-R-S-E, Morse, not Morris. Papers are tricky beasts. Okay, I feel like I've taken care of all the high spots. Um, let's just see here. This is very crude. All right, it seems testable. If this totally, if this craps the bed, um, all I really need to do is go buy another one because I think this internal one is actually in great condition. A little bit of oil on that persuasion. Yep. And we will oh yeah, let's clean this out. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring this video, and they have a special offer for tested fans. As part of their Skip the Upgrade program, iFixit is offering iPhone and Pixel parts for 20% off. In addition, use the code SKIPTEST to get free shipping on your orders. Just note, free shipping applies to standard domestic round shipping in the United States only and ends on September 30th. Thank you, iFixit, for allowing people to skip the upgrade this year. And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. The lathe. Uh, this is the tailstock, and this is the port that has the Morse taper. So technically, So if we pull this all the way back, we should, yeah, there we go. Separates out. That's great. All right. It actually looks like we've got reasonable contact. Yeah, I love it. Dude, 
Gotta find out if I have the Chuck key for this. Why am I bringing you along on this journey? Well, let's see. Is it this one? Let's see. No, amazingly, that one's too small. Are you serious? <laughs> All right. I thought I had one of everything, but apparently I'm missing a chug key for a... Come on. I know I said at the beginning of the video, but I don't remember. This is a Jacob's number 20. I'll need a chuck key for that. Um, yeah. I know, it's a quick and dirty video. Um, I'm gonna do one more late. So what's gonna happen here is that uh, for this guy, for the uh, 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 strap plow cutter, um, I need, first of all, let's just let it sit there with some oil on it. Uh, there we go, it's protected. Um, that's gonna sit for another video. Not gonna be part of this video because I don't have the knife for it and I'm gonna need, I bought a knife, it's on its way. I'm gonna need to modify that slightly to fit this knife because it's diff slightly different. It's hard to find the knives for those old plow gauges. Uh, and that'll be its own video and I'll cut some straps and make a new belt for myself. Yeah, it's time for a, time for a new belt. Ooh, is that really the cut that we want in that video? Who knows? Um, but, well, I went, uh, so uh, let's see. We're gonna do another bit of, we're gonna do another bit of building on the lathe in this video. I know, it's kind of making a left turn. Um, I like my lathe set up like a fighter pilot. That's, I like my lathe set up like a fighter pilot. That's how Tom Lipton described it. Um, and I've, I've got a quick change tool post system. It used to be the Allura system, which is a simple dovetail. And I went to a multi-fix 40 position set of automatic. Uh, so I can load different tools into these like this universal Allura's cutter, which I modified to fit into the multi-fix. I've got boring bars, I've got cutoff wheels, I've got shaped cutters. I've even got a, 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 a carriage drill, which will be a whole nother video. But they've been sitting here, and this is not ideal for the, this was great for the Aloris. It's a little less great for the Multifix because Multifix has, this just, my orientation isn't right here. This is a little too tall. This is a little, I can't see the back tools. Um, and there, sorry. There is a system for hanging the multi-tool, sorry, the Multifix uh, tool post, tool change system. And I bought these from somebody on Etsy or eBay. We'll include a link in the description. Um, these are 3D printed multi-fix holders. Yes. So the holder sits like this and the multi-fix sits on it. Come on. Come on. There we go. Like that. So I have 10, I have 10 of these. I bought 12 of these. Always room for expansion. Always room for expansion. <clears throat> uh, so I am going to replace this entire arrangement right now. Yeah, it's three o'clock. It's I got time before the end of the day. It'll be like, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So uh, we are going to load up our... Let me give you a better view. Um, so let's see here, this guy. Hmm. Well, technically, that's the 
only thing I want out of this, right? Oh, it's glued and screwed. You nutshell. I don't want to drill that again. Well, it went well. It went well. God, I love how greasy wood gets after you let it sit for a while. There we go. Yeah, just a little bit of frustration. Wow. All right. Uh, we'll go this. Okay, so now I want to know what the spacing is. We've got some real cheapo plywood here. This is perfect for this. So uh, let's see. We have some big and some smalls. I think we put the larges on the bottom. I guess it's either side of that. One, two. Three, four. And that's the bottom. There we go. That's the line. Three and three quarter? No. 2.75. 2.75. Right. And then there's only one. Because I can always grab the post magnet. Very close. Yeah. Okay, so if that does that, what is that? That's two and a half. So I think we can say two point two and five eighths. Okay, good. That I like. Great. So what did I say? Three and a quarter. Yeah, we'll try that. We'll lay that out and see how it works. Screw everything down. Three and a quarter. Wait, wait, wait. Right. So there's that. And then. Yes, right. Yes, cool. Great sound. So that's the, Big one lives here. Wait, and let's say this big one lives here. And they are at the same level, give or take. Um, we are going to come up a little bit.
Uh, I've got everything I need, I think. I think. I think I do. I think I have everything I need. So we're going to... Uh, I'm going to assemble this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Assemble it like that. Yes, there we go. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to get some glue on that. Ooh. Someone's a little stuck up. Oh, I see what my issue is there. It's that. Right. And I do want that hidden there. Okay, cool. So. Mm -hmm. Pull it off the my bridge, man. Pretty square. I really don't even know. Run through it. Nice. Okay. So now, now these are slated. Okay. I could be totally wrong about this. These have the logo in them. It says multi B because it's a B-size multi-fix. And they're meant to hang from these, but that just doesn't feel... I'd rather put them this way, and then they're both sitting on these and sitting on there. I'm not putting all my faith in one kind of joint. There we go. We're going to do that to that. Yep. And we'll sleeche that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So this will live here. All right, so here is where it's gonna live. Did I do that? I went through all of that and I mounted it upside down. How about that? Well, this is a teachable moment. Way is actually to mount to because 
this isn't budging. All of that is already just permanent. So we're gonna swap these out and remark them. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, Sometimes your path of least resistance is without a doubt the most tedious, but actually frequently the path of least resistance is without a doubt the most tedious. That's, that's kind of guaranteed. Okay. I should have this back together in less than 15 minutes, really. I feel like such a thing. So the first one is four and a half, and then each after that is three and a quarter. So the first one is four and a half, is that correct? First one, four and a half, yes. First one is 4.5. 4 4.5, 4 4.5, 4 .5. and then each one after that is three and a quarter. So, go. Three and a quarter, six and a half, nine and three quarters. All right, well, after a hitch in my get along, let's see if we can't get everything up and running over here. So this lives here. Once all of these are on, I think it's weight is gonna just hold it all down. Great, let's do another cut off here, great. It's a blank there. This guy can here. Yeah. That's super important. I use that all the time. Actually, there we go. That's the one. Yeah. I'm very, very happy with that. That's respectable and I can reach and grab what I need and I can put it back and I can reach and grab what I need. I can put it back and I can even put this one and this one here and here and they don't get in each other's way. This is a real trick with tool storage is being able to accommodate. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've built something where all the stuff only went back into it one way and that is a boring slot. Now there's one more aspect to this which is this part, and I know this doesn't look like an important part, but this took a long time to make and I'm not remaking it. So yeah, I think that is, uh, if I'm correct, this is Imperial and this is metric. So where the frack do these live? Maybe here? Ooh, actually, actually, that is not terrible. I mean, I can brace it against the... I can embrace it. It gives me everything that I need and gives me right here. I don't need that. That doesn't need this. Now this could... Yeah, I think I'm going to do that and then I'll brace it with something over on the bottom. Let's see here.
Not sufficient? All right, well, this is the one I need all the time. Dun, dun, dun. Go work on that, come on back, put it back here. <clears throat> and everything's kind of out of my way. This guy can live over here. And cover that, and so can this guy. He also lives over there. That's awesome. None of this is going anywhere. And now the big chuck finds its way home. There's the small, there's the gold blocks, there's the big, and then there's the gargantuan. Yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Really? Okay, so maybe, maybe you live here and you live here. What the oh, crazy hell? All right, I guess I've just got to, like, these things have to live kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, it's not ideal, because I'd rather have it be small, medium, large, but I don't really care. Uh, dudes, yeah. Um, thank you, Alameda Flea Market, for the beautiful one-inch opening Jacob's check. That is a beautiful thing. Uh, and also, uh, I'm super psyched about my new Multifix B uh, tool holder. Yeah, I know they're not perfectly level. Who cares? Um, my fighter pilot setup has just gotten a little more refined, and I'm happy about it. Thank you guys for joining me for this one-day build. We'll get to the plow gauge later.